So, hello and welcome to a new video on my channel. Um, today I will talk about a function that is super useful. It's quite a new function. It came out in the current channel just a few weeks ago. And it's a function I will uh, teach based on a practical example, the practical example of an auditor. Um, but this function can be used also for other purposes or in other, in other positions or, or sectors. So, if as an auditor you need, for example, or may need to do like um, a sum after debitor ID. So you have here a huge list of like 50,000 entries and you want to sum this after the debitor ID to check if the um, balance is matching with the, um, with the overall debitors and if the um, debitor list is matching to the bookkeeping based uh, by debitors or you may apply some uh, depreciations based on the debitor or so on or so on. So you need to have something to get the um, outstanding value or the sales value based on the debitor and yeah, we will do this now. So what I did in the future was like using here the unique function or the debitor ID or the debitor name and then used here a sum if or sum if s function. Here this is my sum range, the net price criteria was here, the debitor ID and my criteria range was this unique here. And now I have here the value based on um, debitor ID. It's like 21 billion. Yeah, I know it's like a 100% fictional data set I created just a few moments ago. But now with the so-called group by function, you can do this kind of task in a single function. Especially if you don't know, oh, there's a unique function, there's a sumfs function, this sounds like creepy, uh, then only learn the group by function if you want, do not want to learn also the other stuff. So here we need uh, to input the row fields. This is the, like the unique we used before. This is like the header we sort after or we uh, apply this after this category. So in this case, this is our debitor ID. Then our values is uh, these are the values we want to sum, for example. Therefore, we select the net price. And then the group by function asks after a function. In this case, it's in so called eta reduced lambda. And as we uh, want to have the sum after the debitor, we select your sum or type in sum. And then we get a list. In this case, we get also a total at the bottom, but you can deselect this here. So here, total depth, no totals. Uh, yes. And then it's there, no total at the bottom. Also make this beautiful here. And then what you can also do there, for example, is sort this after, for example, um, descending sales volume that you have here, your um, debitor ID and then based on this, the sales volume. Uh, sorry, uh, apply this to here. Yeah, now it's being more beautiful. You could also do here some filtering and a lot of other stuff. What you can also do with this function quite easily is using here a count or count a function to have like the um, sales, how often you sell to a, to a customer, to a debitor. So this function is applicable, applicable for a lot of stuff. And here, as you will see here, this blue border, the output of the, of the group by function is a dynamic array. The, only that you know this. Um, yeah, what you can also do, I don't know if this will work, but we will see. Um, this should work. Yeah, this will work. We can also have like a header where we not only have the um, the debitor ID, but also the debitor number. Uh, it's working right. Yeah, 21 billion, but it's, oh yeah. And then I need to sort after the um, column three to get this like here easily done. So we have here 
our debitor name, our debitor ID and the net price beautifully in a single function. And yeah, we would like to have it here. We use here an XLOOKUP and based on debitor ID returning the debitor name. Yeah, this would also work. But you see here, this is a single function. This is more, uh, you can also do this here in, in a single function, but then it will get a little bit messy to do this here also. Um, so here, unique debitures, for example, here, you put this in here, you do a haystack on this, you stack here also the unique debitures in, and then you do an sum if s after here the unique debitures and you get here also a table then you can also sort this table after the third column and in this scanning order here yeah, and you have basically the same but it's a uh, year less uh, crowded also if you know that there is the let function where you can make this a little bit more structured but yeah, even then it will look me look messier and be messier as if you use the um, group by function also. If I said the B for column B, you can do this in the extent you want, but it will stay crowded and not so beautiful as in the group by function. So you see here, this is the long version, this is the short version short version and also if you want if I want do not want to have the sum but the average I can easily switch this with, with a single argument changing if my computer is calculating correctly. So you see here the group by function is uh, for example here in auditing where you need to do this or may need to do this um, super useful it's a function you should take a look on and yeah I highly recommend to learn it also in like actually sports a lot a lot of my most if um, lambdas I do not use quite currently because I use the group by function instead. That's another use case for group by. So thank you for your attention. If you want to learn more about Excel, check out my channel and subscribe. Otherwise, I wish you a wonderful day and I hope you can apply the group by function somewhere. Bye.